Bonjour Annie Neuf. Aujourd'hui c'est vendredi 12 juin 2020. Écrivez la date dans vos cahiers de français avec le titre d'aujourd'hui Le passé composé, sixième partie. Ok guys, so write the date for today and the title of today's lesson Le passé composé, sixième partie. Our sixth lesson on the perfect tense. Nos objectifs de la leçon aujourd'hui sont de corriger le travail de la semaine dernière, de réviser le passé composé avec avoir et être, et de faire un contrôle sur le passé composé. Ok, so what we're going to do today is we're going to start by correcting the work from last week, then we're going to revise the perfect tense with avoir and être as auxiliary verbs, and finally we're going to complete a test on the perfect tense. Ok, on va commencer avec euh, la correction de votre travail de la semaine dernière. Ok, so, prenez un stylo vert, take a green pen, et vous allez corriger votre travail. You're going to correct your work. Ok, so what you needed to do was provide the auxiliary verb and the past participle um, so that you were writing the French for what was listed on the right hand side. So I chose, you needed to pick an auxiliary verb out of the red box and a past participle out of the blue, sorry, not box, the blue oval at the bottom. Okay, so I chose is j'ai choisi. You finished is tu as fini. He slept is il a dormi. She chose is elle a choisi. We finished is nous avons fini. You slept vous avez dormi. They finished. Ils ont fini. And they slept. Elles ont dormi. So what we're doing here is exactly the same thing, but for RE verbs, regular RE verbs, where we remove the RE and we replace it with a U to form the past participle. And again, you needed to correct, you needed to choose the correct auxiliary verb from the Uh, orange oval to go with the subject pronoun on the left. So I sold is j'ai vendu. You waited is tu as attendu. He lost is il a perdu. She sold is elle a vendu. We waited nous avons attendu. You lost plural vous avez perdu. They waited, ils ont perdu. Sorry, ils ont attendu. They lost, elles ont perdu. On continue avec le stylo vert. So what you needed to do here was copy the sentences below and translate them into English. Numéro 1, je suis allé, means I went or I have gone. There are always two possible translations in English and you need to decide From the context, normally when this, these sentences are in context, which one would be most suitable. Nous sommes restés means we stayed or we have stayed. Elle est tombée means she fell or she has fallen. Tu es venu means you have come or you came. Il est né means he was born. He has been born, you could say. Numéro 6, elles sont restées. They stayed or they have stayed. Numéro 7, vous êtes parti, you have left or you left. Ils sont descendus, they've gone down or they went down. Nous sommes arrivés, we arrived or we have arrived. On est rentré, we've gone home or we went back. So, on continue avec la correction, avec un stylo vert. Ok So what you needed to do was write these sentences into your book, replacing um, the blanks or the lines with a correct auxiliary and a correct past participle using the verb in brackets on the right. So for the first one you should have had, Je suis allé au cinéma avec mon ami hier soir. And the translation of that sentence is, I went to the cinema with my friend last night. Numéro 2, Ma soeur est allé, sorry, est resté au café jusqu'à minuit. My sister stayed at the café until midnight. Numéro 3. Il, 
est descendu de sa chambre. He came down from his room. Numéro 4. Nous sommes venus en train, puis nous avons pris un taxi de la gare. So, we came by train, then we took a taxi from the station. On continue. Numéro 5. Mon père, we take the verb in brackets, which is entrer, it takes être as an auxiliary, so mon père is like il, so mon père est, to get the past participle of rentrer, we remove the er, because it's an er verb, and we replace it with an e acute. Mon père est rentré de la France samedi matin à 10h30. My father returned from France on Saturday morning at half past 10. Numéro 6. Michel et Sabine. So we have two subjects here. This would equate to the subject pronoun they. Therefore, we're going to use the il form with an s of the verb être. Ils sont. Um, and the verb is arriver. It's an er verb, so we remove the er and we add an e acute. Michel et Sabine sont arrivés en retard en raison de l'embouteillage sous l'autoroute. So Michel and Sabine arrive late because of the traffic jam on the motorway. Now what you will notice here is there is an extra s on the past participle and that's because for verbs which take être as an auxiliary verb you need to make the uh, past participle agree. Um, so if you have a, a plural subject pronoun, Michel et Sabine, or you have two people, you have to add an extra s onto the past participle. This only happens uh, with verbs that take être as an auxiliary. Numéro 7. Mon frère est sorti avec sa petite amie vendredi soir. So mon frère is like he, so we've got the uh, il est, sorti, the past participle, it's an IR verb, so we remove the IR and we replace it with an I. Uh, sortir means to go out, so mon frère est sorti, my brother went out with his girlfriend on Friday evening. In French you say girlfriend by saying little friend, petite amie. Numéro 8. Elle, something, a, il y a deux heures. So the verb is partir, to leave. Elle is plural, so we're going to have the plural conjugation of être. Elles sont, um, and the verb is an IR verb. We remove the IR and we replace it with an I. Um, and we've added an extra ES on the end of the past participle because we're talking, we, we've got a plural subject, but it's also feminine. So feminine plural, we add an E for the feminine and an S for the plural. So the translation of the sentence is, they left two hours ago. Il y a plus a time frame means ago. Il y a on its own obviously means there is or there are. But when it's followed by a number, it means ago. À Paris, nous sommes montés au troisième étage de la tour Eiffel. So, in Paris, we climbed up to the third floor of the Eiffel Tower. So again, we've got the, the uh, conjugation of être, which agrees with nous, nous sommes, and we have the past participle of an ER verb. We've taken the ER off and got an E acute, and it's we, it's plural, so we've added an S onto the past participle. Notre deuxième objectif, c'est de réviser le passé composé avec être. So, what we're going to do is we're going to revise the perfect tense with être. Okay, so first of all, if you are in any doubt, you need to practice conjugating être in the present tense because this is what you're going to be using as the auxiliary verb um, for these Mrs. van der Tramp verbs, these verbs which take être in the middle. In the, as the auxiliary verb. So let's do this together. Je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont. You all have that uh, written in your grammar books. Go to uh, and have that open to do the following exercises if you are unable to memorize it or go through it and try to learn it before you do the exercises which are following. If you don't have it written down there, you can Google être, present tense, and find the conjugation and write it in your books. 
or look at last week's lesson where it was written on a slide for you. You could also attempt to learn the verb by going onto YouTube and using a song to help you remember that conjugation. We did put a link in last week's lesson to do this, so do make the most of that. So last week you should have written the mnemonic Dr and Mrs van der Tramp into your books, preferably your grammar books if you have them. Um, this mnemonic will help you remember those verbs which take être as an auxiliary in the passé composé, perfect tense. Um, sometimes you will find that the doctor is left off. Um, we just have Mrs van der Tramp and we remember all those verbs. verbs. We will also remember that any verbs derived from those verbs also take être as an auxiliary verb. For example, the doctor part of Dr and Mrs van der Tramp includes the verbs devenir, to become, and revenir, to come back. As venir, to come, is already in Mrs van der Tramp, automatically those verbs which come from venir will be included. Maintenant vous allez vous tester. So now you're going to test yourself. Here we have the Mrs van der Tramp verbs listed. Um, so you have the first letter, Mrs van der Tramp, to remind you of the verb which follows. Now as we said last week, most of these verbs are verbs of movement. To come, to go, to go up, to go down, to go out, to go in, to arrive. Obviously to be born and to die are changes of state, so they kind of imply movement. But the odd one here, the odd one out, is number 11, rester, which is um, to stay. There is no movement involved in that at all. So that one needs to be remembered uh, separately. Now let's go through and see if you remember what these verbs mean. So monte is to go up, to climb up, a bit like to mount in English. Rentrer is to return, but it means specifically to go back home or to go back to school after the holidays. Sortir is to go out, venir is to come, arriver is to arrive, naître is to be born, descendre is to descend or to go down, to climb down, Entrer is to enter, retourner is to return, tomber is to fall, rester is to stay, aller, to go, mourir, to die, partir, to leave or to depart. Now, how do we remember what the past participles are? The past participles are formed in exactly the same way as they are formed for verbs which take avoir as an auxiliary in the passé composé. Um, therefore, if you have an ER verb, you remove the ER and replace it with an E acute. If you have an IR verb, you remove the IR and replace it with an I. And if you have an RE verb, you remove the RE and replace it with a U. There are a couple of exceptions which we'll look at in a minute. So monter becomes monter. Rentrer becomes rentrer. Sortir becomes sorti. Venir, venu. This is uh, an irregular past participle and needs to be learned separately as it does not follow the rule. Arriver is arrivé. Naître becomes né. Descendre becomes descendu. Entrer becomes entrer, retourner becomes retourner, tomber becomes tomber, rester becomes rester, aller becomes aller, mourir becomes mort, this is irregular, partir becomes parti. Okay, so we have here the irregular past participles. I've placed a blue asterisk by them so you can identify them and learn them separately. Okay, well done to those of you who identified them. Now, before we start doing exercises um, on uh, to practice the Mrs. van der Tramp verbs, the verbs which take être as an auxiliary, we need to remember that with Mrs. van der Tramp verbs, the subject has to agree with the past participle. So, even though the past participle is formed in the same way as it is for verbs which take avoir as an auxiliary, we need to add onto the end of the past participle some agreement if we have a female subject, feminine subject, or a plural subject. Okay, so to remind you of these rules, this is what happens. If the subject is feminine, you need to add an E to the past participle. For example, elle est allée. If the subject is plural, you need to add an S to the past participle. Nous sommes allés. So we don't hear this agreement, we only see it in writing. If the subject is plural and feminine, you need to add ES to the past participle. For example, elles sont allées. Now, I would like you to write this down in the grammar section of your um, vocab book if you haven't already done so, because this is an important, important part of the past tense for those verbs which take être. And remember, this only happens 
for verbs which have être as an auxiliary verb. You do not need to do this for verbs which take avoir because the past participle for those verbs always just stays the same. So what you're going to do here is write out the sentences and you're going to choose the correct past participle um, from the three options you've been given. So we're going to do the first one together. Um, and as an extension, I would like you to translate these sentences into English. So, Francesca, Francesca n'est pas venue, venue, venue. Now, all those past participles sound the same when you say them, but looking at them, we need to choose which one of the three um, is appropriate for the subject. So, Francesca is a, a girl's name, so therefore our subject is feminine. Now, we know that the past participle is venu. You can look back to your list of Mrs. Sandra Tramp verbs to check the past participles if you want to. Um, and we know that when we have a feminine subject, we need to add an E on the end of the past participle to make it agree. So this one would be Francesca n'est pas venu avec nous, which means Francesca did not come with us. Okay, so pause the slide here. Write out the other sentences, choosing what you think to be the correct past participle, and next week we will go through this together. Maintenant, regarde les participes passés et corrige les erreurs. Okay, so you need to look at the past participles in relation to the subjects and correct the mistake. So what we've done here is highlighted all the subjects for you. So uh, from one to nine, you have something highlighted in green and that is the subject of the sentence. So let's do the first one together. Um, elle est montée. Now we can see here that the subject is singular and the subject means she. Okay, now uh, the auxiliary verb is a conjugation of the verb être. This means we're dealing with a Mrs. van der Tramp verb. This means that because the subject, the auxiliary verb is être, we need to make sure that the past participle agrees with the subject. So we can see here in the first instance, instance that the subject is feminine. Therefore, we need to add an extra E onto the end of the past participle to show that the subject is feminine. So, elle est montée dans l'autobus pour aller à l'école. I would like you to go through the rest of the sentences and apply the same process. In each instance, there is a mistake with the past participle. You are only correcting the past participle in each case. Nothing else is wrong and you need to correct it every time. If you need help, please look at the yellow box to give you more guidance. Do message me on Share My Homework if you don't understand and I can explain further. So now you're going to practice inserting the correct uh, conjugation of être as the auxiliary verb and then choosing the correct past participle to go with the subject. So you need to look at the subject in both instances to work out which conjugation of être you're going to use and which um, past participle to pick. So let's do the first one together. Ma soeur is my sister, therefore this is like saying she in English. So we're going to choose the third person singular of the verb être. Je suis, tu es, il, elle, est. So ma soeur est allée en ville. Now my sister is feminine, therefore we're going to have the past participle plus an extra e to show the feminine. And it means my sister went or my sister has gone into town. What you need to do is copy the rest of the sentences, including the correct conjugation of être, which you should be able to find in your... Um, in the grammar section of your vocab book if you wrote it down. Um, try to do it without looking if you can. And then you're going to choose the correct past participle. Okay, there's only one past participle in each case which can be correct. Qu'est-ce que tu as fait hier? What did you do yesterday? You're going to now practice putting these verbs into the perfect tense using the conjugation of the verb être and um, forming the past participle to add on to the end. So, in each instance, you have the infinitive in brackets that you are going to use, um, and you have the subject pronoun to help you decide um, what's going to go on the end of the, on the, of the past participle, and 
what conjugation of adverb you are going to use. So use your vocab books to help you. Um, if you don't know the verb être, you can look it up there. If you don't know the past participle, you can look it up there. Or you can practice forming the past participle on your own. Um, so let's do the first one together. Je, I. So the conjug appropriate conjugation of être would be suis. And then how to form the past participle? It's an ER verb. Therefore, we remove the ER and we replace it with an E acute. Je suis allé. In brackets, we have an extra E. Now, we would add this extra E if we were talking about ourselves and we were feminine. So, for example, if I say I went, because I am female, I'm going to write je suis allé with an extra E on the end. Um, do use the help box to the right um, to help you if you feel you aren't clear on what you should do. Um, and have a go at doing numbers 2 to 8 on your own. And we will mark these together next week. So now we're going to practice translating from English to French. So identifying the correct verb that we need in French from the Mrs. van der Tramp list. And then practicing remembering the correct conjugation of être and forming the past participle for the verb we have chosen. So let's do the first one together. We went up. So first of all, we need to find the verb to go up. What is the infinitive to go up? So if you look on your list of Dr. and Mrs. van der Tramp verbs, you are going to find the verb to go up, which is monter. So we have our infinitive. Now we need to uh, use that infinitive and conjugate it in the passive composé using être. So we is nous. The correct conjugation of être to go with nous is some. And then the correct past participle for the verb monter to go up. It's an ER verb, so we're going to remove the ER. And we're going to end up with an E acute at the end. And what are we going to add on the end? As it is plural, nous, we, we're going to have to add an extra S onto the end of the past participle. I would like you to follow the same process um, with for numbers 2 to 10. So you need to, in each instance, first of all, work out which verb from the Mrs. van der Tramp list you are going to be using. They left, number 2. What is the verb which means to leave? Off you go. Maintenant, vous allez traduire les phrases. So now you're going to translate the sentences. Um, you're going to practice what you've been doing on the previous slide, um, but adding to it so, so as to um, embed it into uh, a, a, a whole sentence, a longer sentence. Okay, so Simon went to Paris yesterday. Let's do the first one together. Um, Simon went is the first thing that we're going to translate. So Simon obviously is going to stay the same because Simon is a name. Now, went, we're going to be using the passé composé and we're going to, uh, all of these uh, translations here are for verbs, Mrs. van der Tramp verbs. So they're all going to be including a conjugation of the verb être. So Simon went, Simon is like he, so we need to look down uh, the list of the être verbs and find out which conjugation goes with he. So Simon est. Now, what is the verb to go? The verb to go is aller. So Simon went, which is the past participle of the verb to go in English. Um, Simon est. Aller is an ER verb. We're going to take off the ER to form the past participle and replace it with an E acute. Simon est allé. Okay. Now we need to work out how to say to Paris. So Paris is a place within a country. Therefore, it doesn't have a gender. So we use the preposition à, à Paris. And the verb and the word for yesterday, um, you should have in your vocab books, is hier. Simon est allé à Paris hier. Okay, do you have a go at doing the rest on your own? Um, and we will correct these together next week. Now for the very last part of the lesson. So you've worked very hard already. You've had a lot to do. Um, we'd just like you to complete a test on the perfect tense, okay? Vous allez faire un contrôle sur le passé composé. So your final task is to complete the two quizzes that have been set for you on Show My Homework. One of the quizzes is on the perfect tense with verbs that use avoir as an auxiliary verb. And the second quiz is on the perfect tense uh, with verbs that take être as an auxiliary verb. So those Mrs. van der Tramp verbs that we have been practicing during this lesson. Alors, bon chance, année neuf. A plus.